Hey guys, welcome back to the Switch and Click, and today we'll be talking about the five best mechanical keyboards for typing, specifically for typing, not for gaming. So we're looking at quality designs, layouts that are comfortable for the office, looks that are appropriate to bring to the office without your coworker saying, "Ew, is that a mechanical keyboard?" And then they'll say, "I don't want to hear those clicks" or something like that. So we got five good ones today. All right. So as you all know, many of today's mechanical keyboards are made with gaming in mind. However, honestly, it doesn't really matter if it's branded for gaming or not. You can still type on it. All the keys are still mechanical switches. So it's up to you whether you want to buy a keyboard specifically made for typing, specifically made for programming, or specifically made for gaming. They can really all mix and match. Uh, for typing, I prefer using tactile switches. Um, you can choose the switch that you like to use. I've typed on the linear reds before. They're fine. They have some problems when I use them just because sometimes I miss a key and then I have to go back and it gets really annoying. Um, but with the tactile keys, I really like them because I don't miss a key because I can feel when I actuate them. Um, but I don't like the blues since they're too, they're too clicky for me. Uh, first, I'd really like to mention that ergonomic keyboards are probably your number one choice when you're looking at keyboards specifically for typing, especially long-term typing. Something like writing a blog, or writing newspaper articles, or writing a book, things of that sort. Um, if you're going to be typing day in and day out programming too, um, you want something that's going to be comfortable for your body and it's going to reduce fatigue and reduce chances of injury. So we have a post on the top ergonomic keyboards. Make sure you check that. I'll just link that down below as well in the show notes. Um, so let's start. Um, we're going to start with the DAS keyboard Model S Professional. And DAS Keyboard specializes in professional keyboards um, for working professionals in the field um, to improve their typing efficiency. Their price ranges are pretty typical of what you see within the mechanical keyboard community. I would say they might even be on like the lower end of what these keyboards can cost. Um, as we keep going down, we'll start seeing some really expensive keyboards that were just like, is that even worth it anymore? So the DAS keyboard Model S Professional. Um, it comes with two switches that you can pick from, the cherry blues or the cherry browns. So they don't even let you pick a cherry red option, unfortunately. And it comes in at $120 right now. It's a full-size keyboard, it has a number pad, and it has 104 keys. So if you're doing a number entry in the office, this will probably be a pretty good option. On Amazon, it has four stars with over 1,500 views. So a highly rated keyboard that comes at a pretty reasonable reasonable price point. So it can be bought for either Mac or Windows. The only difference will be those um, few keys on the bottom, um, on the bottom row. Um, so like the control option, um, the command, things like that. Um, and the keycaps are Laser Etch Legends and their mechanical switches. Um, it does have media controls, but it doesn't have the typical volume knob that when you see a DAS keyboard, you're like, ooh, that's nice. So it doesn't have that, but their other models, the DAS keyboard for professional or the ultimate edition, they have that. Um, so the DAS keyboard for DAS keyboard for professional is very similar, except it has the volume knob, and then the ultimate has blank legends, you know, just to make you look super cool. Um, but it requires two USB ports um, to use. It does have a pass-through, but I believe they're pretty low powered. Um, one downside to this keyboard is that um, since the legends are just laser etched, they're really, they don't pop that much and it makes it really hard to type without proper lighting. But in the office, this is probably perfect. You're not going to be typing in the dimmed light anyways. Another downside is that if you want to take the board apart, you have to take off the rubber feet um, because the screws are underneath. Um, but I mean, how often will you be taking this board apart, right? Um, and then the key caps are ABS plastic instead of PBT. 
um, over time there's grime and dirt and nastiness as you know because we keep saying PVD keycaps are so much better. Indy what? That's the cat. Um, and in number two we got the Happy Hacking Keyboard also called the HHKB. They make several different models. Um, we're just going to talk about them all as a range. Um, they are all compact 60% layout with 60 keys. It fits easily in your bag, um, but there are some downsides. 60 keys is a lot lower than what we've seen for 60% keyboards. We've seen 61, we've seen 62 and 63 um, key 60% keyboards. So this this keyboard at the bottom left and the bottom right are missing keys where there could be keys there. On the bottom right there's a logo and the bottom left is just empty. Why? I'm not sure. But this keyboard is different in the fact that it has the tote brace switches. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, they're electrostatic capacitative switches. So they're very much different than the rubber, rubber dome switches as well as mechanical switches. But they're sort of somewhere in between. Um, they're actuated differently and we go into depth a lot more on that within the blog post that will link down below as well. Um, so this keyboard is primarily all plastic. The one thing that's really special about this keyboard um, is that the layout is different for your convenience. So you know where the enter key is, the backspace is right above that instead of having that slash and then the backspace. And then you got you got your shift then control, then tab, so instead of controlling down there. So it's just a little bit different compared to your usual layout. Um, and then caps lock doesn't even have a dedicated key, it's on another layer. So some people say that when they use this keyboard for a really long time, they are unable to switch back to the normal layout because they just like it so much. Um, let's see. Alright, um, most of them are Bluetooth compatible. They're all fully programmable as well. Um, they all have those toe brace switches. Um, I think there are some minor differences between the models, but make sure you um, read up on them before you buy. Um, the website isn't very detailed on which, like, what's so special about each model. All right, we got the third keyboard is WASD uh, V3 A7 key mechanical keyboard. This one is probably my number one pick within this list of five. Um, so this WASD Keyboards was founded by a group of mechanical keyboard enthusiasts and it has a ton of different options. They have all different sizes and you're able to customize them. They have a whole bunch more switch options than those other companies that are listed here. They have the full size layout, the 10 key list, and then a 60% keyboard that you can customize the colors the switches, the legends, all of that. Um, let's see. So the cost is a bit high. We didn't talk about the price of the HHKB. So they range from $190 to $280 depending on the model that you pick. So pretty pricey. The same thing with these WASD keyboards. They're pretty pricey. For a bare bone 61 key keyboard, it's 100 bucks. And that is without the keycaps, but it comes with everything else that you need, including the switches. And then it ranges to $290 for like the full size keyboard with the O rings, with like the GMK um, keycaps. So, like, really nice, expensive keycaps um, will cost that, you know, that high end range. Um, so, the switch options are Cherry MX Browns, Blues, Reds, Blacks, Clear, Green, Silent Red silver and the Zelio 67 gram. We haven't seen that before. That's pretty special. Um, we list the actuation forces and all of that within our comprehensive guide to switches that we'll also link down below as well. Um, if you build a custom one, you get to pick the color black or white. Um, you get to pick the color of the keycaps of the alpha numeric keys, the numbers and letters, as like pink or something. And then you'll pick the modifiers as another color, I don't know, navy. And then the next option is to pick your legends. So what do you want? The Comac, the Vorak, like Cherry Vintage. There's a whole bunch of different choices to pick from. You can pick lowercase if you're, you know, that weird person that wants that. No one, no one wants that. Um, and then you can add O-rings for $25 more. It's just super customizable and it seems like they really care about um, the quality of your experience. 
The fourth keyboard is the Matthias Quiet Pro Mechanical Keyboard. And these are for the people who really don't want to annoy your office coworkers. Um, it comes in at $150. Um, and it uses quiet click mechanical switches, which are different um, different than what we've been using as well. So these switches are like a modified version of the Alps switches, um, and they're very popular within the mechanical keyboard enthusiast community. Alps are sort of like the smoothest you can get, sort of. Um, on the back of the keyboard are three, you heard me right, three USB ports um, to plug in anything, charging devices, mice, um, headsets, headphones, whatever. Um, the keycaps unfortunately are ABS plastic, um, but they are laser edge etch legends, which are nice. Um, and then the keycaps are sculpted, and so your fingers come right straight in instead of it being flat, so which is nice as well. Um, other features are their dedicated volume control. So if you're talking to someone in the office, or if you're just working and someone comes up to you, you can mute your music and then talk to them and then unmute it without changing screen. So pretty convenient. Um, and then the number pad also has a dedicated tab button for when you're doing a bunch of spreadsheet work. Um, if that's your jam, you know? So it is a full size keyboard. The happy ha the ha the HHKB is 60%. I think I remember saying that. Alright, so now we got our Last one, the Philco Magis Touch 2 TKL Mechanical Keyboard. All right, so this one is a different size. It's 10 keyless, um, it's 87 keys. I guess it's the same as the WASD 87 key um, modification that we did there. So there's no number pad, but you can always buy a number pad on the side for a certain amount of cost. We're writing a post on that right now as I speak. Um, so in the future when you're watching this, you can probably go on our blog and find our post about the best number pads that are available in 2020. Um, so the TKL, TKL version of this Philco keyboard is $140. It has a 4.5 star review with 241 ratings on Amazon. And it's black, but the only, I would say the most special thing about this keyboard is that when you look at it from the top, the legends are blank. But when you're looking at it from the front, it's etched on the front. So you'll never have that problem of your legends fading because guess what? You're never touching the front of your keycaps. That's just strange, right? Um, it has pretty much everything else that other keyboards have, like... N key rollover, four rubber feet, a kick, adjustable kickstand, you know, it's sturdy, it's a stable keyboard, it's a good one. Um, it's probably the cheapest one on this list, and if you're interested in that, then you go ahead and get it. One thing I would like to say is that you shouldn't worry about whether you take your gaming keyboard to the office or not. Like, who cares? Just turn off the RGB. Um, it should be totally appropriate. Who cares if it's I don't know, like a Corsair or something. No one should be able to judge you for the keyboard that you decide to use because it's your preference. So you go out there and you be you, um, but I would say go look at ergonomic keyboards, probably help you in life. I'm 25 and I have a bunch of like body sprains everywhere, so I'm sure you might too, or if not, you might in the future, so be wary of that. Just take care of your bodies, guys. Anyways, that was it for this video. Thank you so much for listening. I know this was sort of a long one. It's probably the longest one I've done so far. Um, but to all you guys, thank you so much for watching our videos. We're working super hard on our blog and our YouTube to try and improve the quality of what we're doing. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please post them down in the comments below and press that like button if you liked it. Um, and subscribe if you want to. I know a lot of people when I was Twitch streaming, they're like, you have a great voice, just keep talking. So if you didn't watch this video, that's fine. Just listen to it. Thank you so much and bye.